Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Relics, and today I'm going to talk about the news that broke out a couple days ago before the All-Star break, um, or like literally just before it. Uh, LA Kings have released uh, head coach Todd McClellan of his duties. Um, I don't agree with this whatsoever, and initially I thought to myself I should make a video right away, I should discuss how I felt. But I wanted it to simmer in a little bit and, you know, let me process how, you know, maybe there's something there that I'm not seeing. And unfortunately, there isn't. Um, there is just, I, I don't see we, the reason why. Um, so, you know, bringing up McClellan on the left, he's fired. And on the right, Jim Hiller, our assistant coach, he will be the new head coach for the rest of the season. And this is something that I 100% disagree with. I thought, personally at least, I thought McClellan was a great coach. I thought he was honest and sincere. And in a way, he never blamed anyone for the disappointment. But you know when things get serious, um, he, he will call certain you know, issues that need to be addressed. And... Unfortunately, the Kings couldn't, you know, approach those issues and fix them, you know, to help them win the games. And so, in the end, the Kings decided to fire him, which I totally disagree with, which definitely puts a big question mark on the state of the franchise, I think. And even though we are, you know, we're still in a playoff spot, we're in a wild card spot right now, it doesn't mean that we're safe. And after hearing what Rob Blake had to say, he, I'm a little disappointed, to say the least. I mean, I mean, you guys know, if you guys have followed along, you guys watched my videos, you guys know that I was really upset, I was really upset about the Dursey trade, right? The Sean Dursey trade that sent him away to the Coyotes, and in exchange for all that, we're, you know, during the off season, we got. Pierre Luc Dubois and got rid of Velarde. I follow. We got rid of all of our key players that played roles on the team, and Rob Blake is responsible for that. He's the GM of the Kings, and he was the one who said that there is no firing McClellan. He's in for the long run. He's here for the rest of the season. Wasn't even a thought of his in his mind. That was like literally what I think it was like two weeks ago when the Kings were really losing still. And I was like, awesome, great. That's like the first thing that Rob Blake said in a long time that I 100% agree with. That it's not McClellan's fault. And the leadership, Kopitar and Doughty, uh, they both agreed. Spe uh, specifically uh, Doughty, he agreed. And he made sure to say that it's the players. It's on the players. I mean, the coaches can't go out on the ice and play the games. And Dowdy was one of the guys who stepped up and said that certain people are not contributing. You know, now as far as what Dowdy said, he said people are concerned about their points, right, and not putting it into the team effort. I don't. I agree with his message, but I don't agree with what, how it was said. Um, I don't think people are concerned about their points. I think people are concerned like the players themselves are concerned more about not getting hurt or you know just doing the next okay thing not the thing that will make the team win not the thing that will get them themselves to the next level or put themselves in a risky situation where they may get hurt but it's a play that may tip the balance in a game and the effort has definitely not been showing so with that in mind Going back to Rob Blake, I don't agree with him firing Tom McClellan, considering that he contradicted his own words, saying McClellan's going to be here all season, and that's just like a betrayal, you know. And I agree with Dowdy and Kobe that it's not the coaching, it's not the it's not the staff's fault, it's the players. They need to step up and do their part, especially the bottom six forwards and the defensemen for the Kings. They need to step up and do their part. Uh, Kings are probably. I, I haven't checked, but I'm pretty sure the Kings is probably one of the worst scoring defensive cores in the league right now. I mean, we hardly score goals, and I've mentioned it time and time again. Sean Dursey, 
the guy we traded away, the cheapest of all the defensemen had he been on the team, has more points than every defenseman on our team. He has more points than Dowdy. So just that fact alone is just mind-blowing. It's just disappointing to see that Rob Blake doesn't know what he's doing and he's just taking one step at a time. Oh, McClellan's here for the long run. No, nah, no, nah, he's fired. Get rid of him. Like, you were the one who told him to come in and fix the Kings. And I think McClellan has done that. He's gotten us to the playoffs, albeit only in the first rounds. But he's gotten us there. And just like I've always said, I think it's the player efforts in the postseason that is an issue. Spe- you know, I've mentioned specific players in the past. I've mentioned Andreas Athanasiu. He sucks. His defense is terrible. I blamed him for games, I think it was five and six. Uh, losses in the playoffs a few years ago uh, last year I think uh, Fiala did a horrible job as well and then well I mean he wasn't in the playoffs but he you know during the regular season it wasn't any you know he didn't show very good discipline and it cost the Kings here and there you know and there's a lot of things there's a lot of players I can blame but in present day I don't think McClellan was the problem um, I mean, we started the season in the first 20 games when I did my quarter season review. We went 13, 4, and 3. That's only seven losses. Four regulation losses. And that, you know, that, that's just incredible. And then we went on to make that record with the road wins, right? That was NHL history. That was McClellan, right? Again, back then, the, the team was playing. Everyone was playing hard. But now we're 23, 15, and 10. 23 wins, 15 regulation losses, and 10 overtime losses. That is just mind-blowing how the Kings can go from a winning team to a losing team. And you really think that blaming the head coach is the problem? I totally disagree. Um, It's players like this guy right here. Pierre-Luc Dubois being paid $8.5 million average annual for the next was six years, right? Six or eight years. And then even players like Gavrikov, who also got paid $6.5 million. I know their contracts this year are cheaper, and then they get more expensive, but you're supposed to come in and help the team win. And the fact that Velarde at one point had more points than Dubois is just disappointing. Velarde, I mean, the guy we traded away for this guy. And then Ayafalo's also doing great. Uh, you know, typical Ayafalo, great two-way forward, four-checker, peak air. You know, he's doing his part on the Jets. It's just it's just something that really bugs me. I mean, Dubois doesn't win his face-offs. He has less than 50%. He half-asses everything he does. And honestly, if you watch the games, he's like literally standing straight up, doesn't hustle, Tries to one hand stick handle everything and just turns over the puck. Every almost every single time he brings the puck into the offensive zone, he loses it. He doesn't pass it off, he doesn't dump it, he loses it. And you guys can check me on that. Go watch the games. I watch almost every single game. I've only missed one or two. Go watch all the games. Prove me wrong. And you know, tell me that I'm 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 just crazy. Because this guy who only has 20 points, it's just ain't cutting it. So, I, yeah. Rob Blake, he needs to do something. Uh, again, I don't like any of the things he's been doing lately. At first I did because of all the rebuilds and stuff. But then he's now just discarding all of our, our great players. He's getting rid of all of our picks. I don't know what he's thinking. And what the plan is right now, I really don't know. Because because you fired Tom McClung. Jim Hiller was our assistant coach already. So making him head coach isn't going to change the fact that we are still the exact same team as we were before he, he fired Tom McClellan. So what difference are, is he going to make? Obviously the trade deadline is coming up. So we have to wait and see what he'll do. But as of right now, there's just no shining, you know, shining silver lining in the you know the distance right now because uh i i don't i don't think the kings can pull it out you know pull off a a win the way we are now and firing our coach is just not helping so 
I know I'm probably just rambling, but again, I just want to get my thoughts out. I've had time to think about it, and unfortunately, I just can't see a reason why we would fire him right now. It really doesn't make sense. I mean, firing him before the All-Star break probably gives the players time to cope with it and figure things out. Maybe they, you know, think it over. Think maybe, maybe I'm the problem. Maybe I need to step up my game and, and try better, you know. And hopefully, I have no word as of right now. Today is, you know, the middle of the break. We have our bye week coming up as well. So, hopefully, Blake Lazat is back from injury. So that solidifies the PK and fourth line center. In which, I, I don't deny that even Blake Lazat hasn't been playing as good as he was in the first 20 games. I don't deny that. But, he is still our best PKer. Him and Lewis, the best PK pair. So, having that back is a great step. And, not that, of course, no offense to the PKers now. Our PK is still number one in the league. That's awesome. I'm very happy about that. But, hopefully, and this is just what I've heard, hopefully, uh, Arvidsson's back as well. Now, am I expecting him to be back right after the break? No. But, end of the month, that sounds like what people are saying. If not, then they're like the first week of March. I don't know for sure, but giving Victor Arvison back on our team, I mean, he was supposed to be our top six right winger where Moore is playing right now. So if we can get Arvidsson back, a guy who can push the offense and get some goals going, I mean, he easily. Arvidsson should be a 20-goal scorer every single year he plays. Unfortunately, back injuries and stuff like that have plagued him for his career but if we can get Arvidsson back hopefully that helps fix things but again that's not going to be till later I don't expect him back after the all-star break so we still have to make do with the team we have so what does that say um well everyone's got to step up um I've heard rumors though that that there is a trade in the horizon don't know when or you know how but I saw this. It's a trade rumor, but you see Saros, the star goalie for the Nashville Predators, would be a candidate that the Kings would trade for. And here's the details on the screen. Um, obviously, this looks very bogus. I, I totally disagree with it. I mean, Saros alone is worth Brant Clark and, you know, actually, in fact, the players themselves, just the players. You don't even need to throw in the 2024 pick. That's just ridiculous. So I don't trust these. Uh, I don't trust these rumors at all. But it is something that has popped up more than once in my, you know, online looks. So it's something I can't ignore right now. You see, Saros. I don't deny he's a great goalie, and that's something that the Kings could use. Um, but I don't blame the goalies right now. I did blame Talbot and Riddick for the goals against in the past couple of games. I don't deny that. However, I don't blame them for the season. And changing the goalies out over and over again last year, this year, you know, and now going forward into the trade down, I don't agree with that. So I don't trust those rumors whatsoever. I think they're false. Um, yeah, uh, if, if you're going to trade somebody, you got to get rid of Dubois. Honestly, that's like the only option right now. Um, Dubois' contract has a no movement. I think it's a no movement clause or no trade clause. And it, it activates after this season is over. So if there is any hope, any little bit of hope mm -hmm. that you're going to get a trade, you got to get rid of Dubois, get rid of the 8.5 million average, and give it to someone else. Give it to a bottom team that needs it. We need, we need a player. That will help us score. Not a guy who will just be there. You know, a filler. Um, again, on paper, Dubois was like the guy that we could have used. But in actuality, he's like the worst thing that could have happened. I'd rather have Velarde. I'd rather have Ayafalo. And yet they're not here. So, um, same thing, Kaliev. Uh, he was mentioned in that trade detail. But Kaliev also, he sucks. He needs to pick up his game. Or he's got to get the boot. And unfortunately, 
he, he he's like a one track mind. I, I I said the same thing during my player reviews during the off season. I said it in the quarter season as well. Um, him and Grunstrom they needed to shoot, and both you know both started to shoot, both started to score, and they looked good. But now that the season's going along, they're reverting back to what they were last year. Basically, nobody's not trusting their shots, not getting in on net, not helping the team in any way that can you know produce goals or even scoring chances. They're just there to fill in the spot you know with in for injuries or a roster spot just because just to give energy to the top three lines again i say top three but do i even count dubois line as a, as a line i don't even know right now it's, it's literally only Kopi and and Deneau's line that are pushing the team um at times the Ferrer and anderson dolan when they were centered with byfield that would look amazing but once Dubois is centering them and Byfield moves back to the top line, all of a sudden those two, Anderson Dolan and Leferriere, they be- they become nobodies again. It's like they have no leadership. They just follow whatever uh, Dubois does. And I think that's just a chain reaction to the energy he brings, which is none. Dubois doesn't bring any energy to the game. So that's just my thoughts on that, though. Um, I-, I just felt like that's the real issue here and not necessarily the coaching staff so again one last time we're just going to reiterate Todd McClellan was not the issue I think Rob Blake is making a huge mistake and he needs to leave I'm sorry as much as the Kings legend as he is Rob Blake needs to leave um he is not doing a good job and you know do I think obviously for example if do you think I could do better no of course not I get it. It's a business. It's tough. You got to make tough decisions, but you got to bring in the guys who will actually produce just because someone's good on paper. You have to watch their games. And I don't think Dubois got enough viewage because man, he is one lazy player. Um, And that goes for quite a few other players on the team too. But Dubois is the most lazy one. And some of the other guys need to step up their game. Otherwise we're just going to keep losing and we're going to get kicked out of the playoff spot. I mean, there are plenty of other teams. The Blues, the Kraken, uh, the Oilers passed us. You know, they're all the Coyotes. These guys are all hunting for the playoff spot. They're right behind us. You know, and if we keep losing, we're going to get kicked out in like the next couple of games, honestly. We're lucky we won the last game against the Predators. That was a four-point game. Obviously, they're also fighting for the second wild card spot as well. So... Yeah, that's, that's all I have to say about the Kings. Um, one other news I wanted to talk about. Connor McDavid. All-Star weekend. Just happened. Uh, won skills comp. He won fastest skater. Of course he did. He won stick handling. Of course he did. Greatest stick handling of the league. And he won the obstacle course. Of course he did. Greatest deking player in the league at top speed. McDavid did it all. Um, I'm actually I cheered for him in the skills comp of the 12 who competed. Obviously, screw you, Kucherov. You're an asshole. So glad you, you know, got all the boos from the fans. Good job, Toronto. Uh, Kucherov is a loser, and I hate his personality. So he deserved everything he got going for him. But yeah, McDavid, good job. Congrats on the one mil. You did amazing, and I still cheer for his team in the All Star game. Unfortunately. Uh, not much chemistry there with him and Drysaddle and Pasternak. I was actually a little surprised. But, uh, yeah, they ended up losing to Team Matthews in the end. So here's Team Matthews with Justin Bieber. My God, Justin Bieber coached them to a, a win. That's amazing. <laughs> so congrats to Team Matthews, of course. Um, again, that's a nice blue all-star jersey. Unfortunately, McDavid's stupid white jersey was a little ugly. <laughs> no offense. It could have at least chose a color. Make us purple. That would have been nice, right? But, uh, yeah. So I just want to throw that out there just because it happened. And it was, an, it was a joy to watch. The skills comp was a joy to watch compared to the last two years um, in Vegas and in Florida. Those were atrocious. Uh, please never do it like that again. I loved it this year. Uh, the All-Star game is still kind of whatever. It's kind of boring just because, you know, the players don't want to hit. They, don't, they just do whatever. But, uh, you know, 
it is what it is. I think the game's kind of, you know, it's just there for charity, so it's whatever. But uh, the skills comp, definitely enjoyed that, and I hope they do the exact same thing again. Again, just to state out the fact that McDavid helped revamp that skills comp, and it was great. I think uh, they said the players loved it. I loved it as a fan, and personally, I think I heard that other fans liked it too. So please bring it back like that. Um, it was a joy to watch. So hopefully they'll, they're not going to do it next year. They announced that they're going to do a, a World Cup between four teams, which I disagree with. It's going to be U.S., Canada, Finland, and Sweden, I believe. I disagree with that. Um, there's plenty of Russians in the league, I believe. Uh, you can get you know, a Team Europe going or something. You could get more teams in. Maybe six teams, you know, eight teams. But only four teams? That's kind of disappointing to see. So there's plenty of players in the NHL that deserve spots on, you know, international stage. But, you know, I'm not in charge of it, so whatever. Again, this is just my opinion. And I hope you guys uh, are enjoying what I have to say. If you guys are, hit the like button. Comment down below what you guys have to say about any of my videos. You know, anything I had to say in this video. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'm going to round this one out. Um, again, Kings are on their bye week. So, no hockey for me all week long. But, you know, it is what it is. So, I got to wait for Saturday. I'm going to the game. Kings versus Oilers. Uh, be the first game under Jim Hiller. So, we'll see what happens. Um, I'm, I'm not expecting much. I'm expecting the exact same Kings team. The only difference, maybe they're rested. But at the same time, maybe they're rusty. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I'm praying that Blake Lazat will be back because he is a big part of the team. And I hope, I, I just hope that the Kings realize that, hey, they messed up. They got to, you know, pick their own games up. Everyone, individually. Not as a team, individually. If you pick yourself up individually, that brings the team together, and that brings everyone up to the next level, and then hopefully we'll get some wins. But for now, I guess that's all I have to say. Thank you guys for watching this one. Hope you guys have a great day. And yeah, I hope the Kings win their next game because I'm going. I don't want to be disappointed, and I don't want to be destroyed by McDavid. That's for sure. At least make it close, you know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, just make it a close game. Please. Please make it a good game. So, go Kings go. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.